Hello folks, welcome to the video. I'm going to walk through relatively quickly how to build a causal loop diagram in Stella Architect. As you can see, I have Stella open now. And over here on the right hand side, we don't have to worry about this stuff for now. So what you should do is open Stella Architect and go up to File. In File, you're going to go down. Oh, I'm in Camtasia still. Let me click on Stella Architect. I'm going to go down and it says new CLD. I'm going to click on that. It's going to open a new window for me. It's very similar to the last one, but this will not allow you to build a simulation model. We're just going to do a causal loop diagram. And I'm in chapter 7 of the Ford reading, and I am going to figure 7.18, which is the feedback loop structure for uh, the flowers. I'm going to go up here to the top left and I'm going to click on the variable icon. Icon. I'm going to come down and what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll set it right there for now. And I'm going to start with area of flowers. I like capitalizing my variable names so that if I use them, if I was writing an article or something, then the variable names would all be capitalized and it would distinguish from the concept basically. So I've got area flowers. I'm going to click after I've put that in. And you can see we have gray area here. This is actually area that I can work in also. So I'm just going to grab this and drag it over. And you can see that it's changing. And I'll just put it in the middle. And clicking on this, I'm going to hit return and just square this up. So I have area flowers. The next variable I'm going to put in is growth. And I have growth. So these two variables are actually connected. And what it shows in the diagram is that the area of flowers leads to growth. And that growth leads. So I've gone up and clicked on the connector there, that red arrow. And I've clicked and I'm holding the shift key down when I go to the next variable is what it is. So, and that allows me to connect this. And what this is saying is the area of flowers is going to influence the growth, and the growth is going to influence the area of flowers. And now what we need to do is put the plus or negative sign on here. And you can see over on the right hand side, it's got the symbol and it has the placement that I can use. So, and th this is circular causality, right? It's a feedback loop, so it doesn't matter where I start. And the rule of thumb or the heuristic is that I'm going to ask if the tail increases, what happens to the variable at the head? So I'm going to start, if growth increased, all other things being held constant, what would happen to the area of flowers? The area of flowers should also increase, right? So I'm just going to click on this. This is selected now. That's why it's highlighted. I'm going to go over and click on the positive sign. And you can see that there's a plus here. And I believe I can make that plus larger by going to the text settings. Oh, this is text settings. Well, let's try it and see if it works. Let me make it 24. And yes, just the plus sign got larger. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to look at the area of flowers. And I'm going to ask if the area of flowers increased, all other things being held constant, what would I expect to happen to growth? And I've got more flowers and they will be able to go to seed and that should allow my growth to occur and I should end up with more growth. It takes flowers to create flowers. And this is a simplification. We're not looking at pollination or anything like that right now. Uh, the area of flowers increases my growth. All the things being held constant would increase. So I'm going to click on this. So this link is selected. I'm going to click on the plus sign. I'm going to go down, I'm going to make it 24, and there I'm good. I have one feedback loop, and now what I'd like to do is label this feedback loop. And if you recall, there's a positive number of plus signs in here, so this is going to be a balancing loop. And positive number of plus signs, I'm probably saying this incorrectly, but it should be if there is an even number of negative signs, it's going to be a reinforcing loop. And zero is considered the even number, so I'm good. I'm going to go up to the T up here. I'm going to click, and I'm going to put my loop labels, what I'm going to click on. 
Now click on the middle here. I'm going to grab it and make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to go over to the right in inner text. And this is, I'm going to just put this as R for reinforcing. I'm going to put in a 1 in case there's additional information here. And this loop name is a nice feature. And then this is just going to be the growth loop. And I think we're pretty good with this. Tell you what, I'd like to make this text larger is what it is. So I can go down. I, I've selected it. I'm going to go down to the bottom right and click on the styling tool. Let me just change the... And if I click on this, this is the styling tool. You can see the font's 12. Let me make it 18 so it'll be easier to read. And it changes both the R1 and that. And I can just make these a little bit larger. I can grab, hold down, and move these to make this loop. So I've got one feedback loop in here that's R1. I can see that I have the K in here. I'm going to go up and click on my variable. I go off to the right, and I'm going to click, and this is going to be labeled the K. Imagine the flowers dying, right? I'm going to go up to my arrow and click on that. I want to make sure I'm right on top of the area of the flowers. I'm going to click and hold down with my mouse button. And then I'm going to drag this over to decay and let go on decay. So if the area of flowers increases, all other things being held equal, decay will increase. Imagine if I have more flowers, I'm going to have more flowers dying. If I had more people, all other things being held equal, I would have more people dying. Now I'm going to go up and click on the arrow key one more time, the connector. I'm going to click right on top of decay and hold down. And if decay increases, then the um, area of flowers would decrease, right? So let me walk through this slowly. So I can start with any variable. The heuristic again is I'm going to ask if the tail increases, what happens to the head? So if decay increased, all the things being held equal, area of flowers would decrease. It would move in the opposite direction. This will be a negative sign. I'm going to go and I made the last one 24. I, I know the negative signs are always smaller. I'm going to make this 36 just so it's nice and thick and easy to see. If the area of flowers increased, and again, it's that teaching heuristic. You always ask if the tail increases, what happens to the head? The area of flowers increases, then what's going to happen to decay? All other things held equal, the decay will increase. So it's going to be a positive relationship. I'm going to click on the positive. I'm going to make it 24. And I have another feedback loop. And in this feedback loop, there are an odd number of negative signs, which indicate that this will be a balancing loop. The other way to think of this is for these reinforcing and balancing loops, it, the area of flowers, for some reason, there could be a flood or a huge storm that could make this go down could be unusually nice weather something could happen that would make it go up so the idea is that once you figured out the link polarity the variables can go up or go down so, so let's say that the area of the flowers decreased because there was a huge storm if the area of flowers decreased then the decay would decrease the decay has just gone down so that all other things held constant, the area of flowers would be greater than it would have been. So you can see that with a balancing loop, once I start out in a direction, it works its way around the feedback loop to move things in the opposite direction. And this is why it comes into balance. I'll do the same thing on the left-hand side with this reinforcing loop. If this area of flowers just declined, I have less flowers which can go to seed to grow more flowers. So the growth would have gone down, plus it's moving in the same direction. The growth has just gone down because of this outside event, and this means the area of flowers will have gone down. And you can see it originally started going down, and when you work your way around this feedback loop, it continues to make it go down even more. So if it was going up, it would be the same story. It would go up, and then it would go up even more. And that's why we're calling it the growth loop. But I'm hoping this makes sense. If it doesn't, watch the video a few times. But talk to me about this. These are they're simple concepts, but it's a little bit different. And I understand how this can be confusing when you're starting out. I'm going to go up and I'm going to click on the um, loop label again. It's selected from before, so I can just click on it. And I'm going to come down. 
I'll make, and this is a balancing loop now, remember? So I'm going to call it B1. And these names are relatively simple. You want to try to name your loops all the time. And this is going to be just the decay loop, right? I can pick a variable out that is part of the loop. I'm going to come down to my style. And it looks like a paintbrush down here. Style settings. And I'm going to go and I'm going to make this 18 so it's easier to read. I can click on and grab this to make it a little bit larger. So we've identified those feedback loops. Here's something else you can do with these loops. So I have this loop selected and I can go over and I can do select variables and connectors. So I'm going to click on the select variables and connectors. You can see it looks like a plus sign. I'm going to click on flowers, which is highlighted. I'll click on the link from flowers to decay. I'll pick, click on decay and I'll click on the link going back to the area of flowers. Now I can double click on the white space anywhere. And now when I go and hover over my decay loop, you can see that's the only loop that's showing up. The other one is grayed out. It's sort of a nice feature to show you or to be able to tell a story and identify which loop you're talking about. And when these models get more complex, the ability to hover over a loop and block out everything else so you're just seeing the loop you're talking about is something that's very powerful in the software. So I'm going to do this one more time. I'm going to go over to my R1 loop and I'm going to click and select on it. I'm in the wrench down here and I'm going to go on select variable connectors. I've clicked on that, I get that plus sign, and again, area of flowers is part of this feedback loop. It's the link from the area of flowers to growth, so I've selected that. I'm clicking on the growth, and then I'm going to click on the link from growth to area of flowers, and I'm done. And I can double click, and now if I hover over this, you can see how the other one's grayed out. So simple. So we're going to add a few more variables in here. I'm going to go up and click on the variables. I'll come down and I'll toss it in here. And I'm going to put two variables in at once. So there is a fraction occupied. And there's one more variable. And what I can do, I'm on a Mac. I'm pretty sure if I click on the option key, let's see if that works. No, not the option key. If I click on the command key, I've lost it at this point. I'm going to go up and click on the variable. And I'm going to come down and put the new variable in here, which is suitable area. And now I'm ready for a few more connections. I'm going to click on the connector here. And I'm going to come down, and the area of flowers is connected to the fraction occupied. Let me pull this. You know, I don't like the way it's running through this. So what I can do is I can select this link and it says outside of arc I'm gonna put it inside of arc I don't even like that inside of arc at the stem inside of the arc at the stem I think I'll keep it there I, I like the way that just gives me space so that it's easy to read so I've connected that to the fraction occupied the suitable area is also connected to the fraction occupied I'll click on my connector I'm clicking and holding down on the suitable area and I'm going over and I just want to square these variable names up so I'm going to click and put it right before the O and occupied and hit a return and I'll do the same thing with area I just think it looks cleaner it really it's unimportant for the most part I'll just straighten this out so if my area of flowers increased the fraction occupied should also increase right so I'm going to select this and it's going to be a plus so it's positive. Um, I think we were putting this at 24. And I like outside the stem. Let's see. Yeah. I think it's a slight movement, but I think it's a little bit nicer. And now if the suitable area increased, the fraction occupied would end up decreasing, right? I'd have a larger area. I have the same amount of uh, area flowers. So you can see how the fraction would get less. And if you think about this, it's really arithmetic. I don't want to call it math just yet. But I'm dividing the area of flowers by the suitable area would give me that fraction occupied. So this variable name sort of makes sense 
if I was to go in and put an equation in here. I'm going to go down and select uh, the link to the suitable area. And it was in the denominator. It's going to be negative. And I think we said this is going to be 36. And let me put this outside the stem. Let me put it inside. Yeah, I got a little more space. It's easier to see. So I've added that. And now for the growth, I'm going to put in a growth rate. And again, I'm going to click on the cursor, put it before the R, and hit a return. I'm going to go up and select the connector. I'm right on top of the fraction occupied, and I'm holding down. I'm going to the growth rate. And if the fraction occupied increases, there's going to be less area for my flowers to go grow, so my growth rate is going to decline. So this is going to be a negative relationship. It's going to be a minus sign. So it's moving in the opposite direction is the way to think of the minus signs. And I'm going to make this 36. It's showing up in the right place. And then my growth rate is going to influence the actual growth. And if the growth rate increased, all other things being held constant, I would anticipate that the growth would increase. So this is going to be a plus. So I've got the selector. It's positive. Yeah, I want it outside the stem, and I'm going to make this 24. Now I've closed another feedback loop, and I can trace around to figure out what's going on here. There's one plus, one minus, another plus, another plus. So I have an odd number of minus signs, which indicates a balancing feedback loop. And the other way to do this is, let's say my area of flowers increased. My fraction occupied would increase. My fraction occupied is just increased, so my growth rate goes down. If my growth rate goes down, growth is moving in the same direction, so growth has just declined. If the growth has declined, the area of flowers is moving in the same direction, all other things held constant, it will be less than it would have been. This indicates that this is a balancing loop. I started out by increasing this, and it worked its way around the loop to then decrease it. So I have a balancing loop. So I'm going to go up to my loop and click on this, make it a little larger. I'm going to call this B2 because it's the second balancing feedback loop I have in this simple model. I'm going to name this. I've already got the growth loop. So I'm going to call this the capacity loop because as my area reaches the capacity or the maximum area I have to fill it with flowers, as that's reached, it's going to be a limit is what it is. So I'm going to call this the capacity loop. You could call it the limiting loop. And, and it really, there's no right or wrong way of picking these names. What you have to do is make a decision and pick something you want because you have to be capable of telling the story. Okay, so that's going to be up to you. So I've selected the capacity loop. And at this point, I'll do the select uh, variable connectors. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to flowers, the connector going to the fraction occupied. Click the fraction occupied. The connector from the fraction occupied to the growth rate. Select the growth rate. Connector from the growth rate to growth. Select growth. And then finally, the connector from the growth to the area of flowers. The one other thing I want to do is I'm going to go down to my style settings here, this paintbrush, and click on this. And I want to make this 18. And now I have another feedback loop. I can double click on the white space. And now when I highlight just the feedback loop I'm interested in showing you or talking about is highlighted. This is actually a new feature in Stella Architect. I'm first time I'm using it actually. So there's one other variable in the diagram, and that's going to be the decay rate. And the decay rate is going to be connected to decay. And if the decay rate increases, the decay should increase. So this should be a positive relationship, right? So I'm going to put a plus sign. I'll put it outside the arc, and I will make it 24. And there's no feedback loop associated with this variable. The same thing with the suitable area. And what these two are, there's nothing coming into them. They're not part of a feedback loop. 
These variables are what we would consider exogenous, right? Exogenous is outside. And when we're doing the systems thinking and the system dynamics modeling, what we're really concerned about is the endogenous behavior. The feedback loops is really what we're interested in. And I could tell a story about this. So say we started a very low level of flowers. We, we would anticipate that there would be a high growth rate. This reinforcing loop would be generating all of the growth. And then what's going to happen is, as you start to um, occupy more and more land, that this fraction occupied loop is going to kick in. The B2 feedback loop is going to start to restrict growth. Okay, And so it's going to start slowing down the growth rate. And then we have this balancing loop over here, which is the decay rate. And the growth rate, this capacity loop, is going to restrict the growth enough that the growth rate and the decay rate are going to be equal to each other. These two loops will have sort of the same strength. And at that point, it'll be an equilibrium. And what a formal model of this would do is generate S-shaped growth. R1 by itself is just going to be reinforcing growth. So it would be growing exponentially. And if I only had a decay loop or the decay loop was the strongest, this would be declining. And you can imagine if it was the only thing in it would decline to zero. So, so that's all I wanted to show you folks to get you comfortable using uh, the software to develop these causal loop diagrams to tell a story. You'll have a homework assignment on this. This is technical stuff. If you get stuck on any of the software, you are to send me a text or to contact me immediately. If I'm available, I'll definitely talk to you. So, And I turn my phone off when I go to bed at night. It's not with me, so you should feel free to call or text at any time. If I'm up, I will respond. And if I'm not, you're never disturbing me. I don't take it to racquetball with me. But feel free to contact me. This is not a course about the software. This is a course about learning these concepts. That's it. I hope this isn't too long. I'll see you folks in class. Thanks. Bye.